without much ado, put your hands together as I welcome the CEO of T Endo Styles. Thank you. You're Thank you so much. I'm really honored to be here this morning. Are you going to take a seat with us? <laughs> okay, please do. Uh, would you permit me to sit? We are all creatives. What do creatives do? What do you think creatives do? Okay. 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 Outside the box. Okay, that's fantastic. Who else has the contrary opinion? Innovation. Okay. I love this. Who else? Okay. Fantastic. I love that so we're on the same page. See, eh? let us tell ourselves the truth. You see those people inside the box, outside there, they cannot do without us. That's the truth. My sister here, I, um, I brought my sister without telling you. I'm sorry about that. She's also a creative. She does fashion designing. I mean, you know, um, a, a client is calling you and telling you, this is what I want, this is what I want. This is what... Can you show me a picture? No, no, you don't get. I mean, I, no, I'm not inside you and I'm not a witch. Certainly not a witch. So you need to bring what you're of talking about in two words, and then I try as much as possible from what you're, the understanding I can gain from what you're telling me, put it into, like give birth to it, a physical representation of it, you know? Somebody is telling me, ah, I want a bag that has like a lock, and then it has the chain, not the regular, <laughs> auntie, calm down. You want a bag, okay. You want it to have a chain, we write it down. You want it to have a pocket, we write it down. You know? And then, when I bring it to a bank, I, yes, this is what I want. And guess what? That customer is going to be very, very satisfied. Why? Because what they have, like you, you basically help them birth what is inside of them. That is what we do. And that feeling to them is very fantastic. Especially people do, that don't know how to do anything. I don't mean the word literally, like they don't know how to do anything. You know what I mean? Like they are not as creative as you and I. The Lord God made all of us. He made you, he made me. He put the, the things that I do in me. I can't sing like you. Even if I train myself till tomorrow. Why? I don't even have flair for it. Yes, I like to sing. I like to hear, you know, those sonorous voices, the harmony, the... It's fantastic to the ears. I mean, it can take you places. Am I lying? <laughs> you know? I'm sure when you hear each other sing, you're like, ah, 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 powerhouse, ah, 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 you know? And it's so beautiful. You can imagine when you're now helping someone else, you know, um, a graphic designer now will help you create maybe... Um, say a logo or um, a business card or even CV and you're like, huh? I don't know, say, let me get all this for my deal. And you're like, ah, if only I can write like that um, songwriter, if only I can, I can tell a story like you do. Those are creatives. Come on, please, let's give ourselves a round of applause. <laughs> we do a lot and we make the world colorful. We make the world colorful. Sometimes when, when it seems like a creative is not... We help and know what to do. So the first thing is know your brand. The second thing is know the audience. Know the audience you are actually with. Your audience will determine a lot of things. Know the audience, your target audience. A portable audience is not the same thing as an Asha audience. You cannot expect the same listenership. So if Potibu is on the streets jumping up and down, I don't expect Asha to be on the streets jumping up and down because she would just be wasting her time. She would literally just be wasting her time. So you have to know your audience. Know what music you appeal to, what your music will appeal to, the people your music will appeal to. You have to know them possibly. Uh, to the best of your knowledge, you need to understand and know the audience. 
who would imagine it's Midakolo and a Podibu in the same song? <laughs> one would be Zazuin and the other one would just be there. What do you say? So it's just a matter of understanding your audience. It doesn't mean you don't have a relationship with every other audience, but your audience is key. And the only way you can know your audience is know your brand. Now, what your audience will do for you is it determines the type of social media, the type of online presence you are creating. So if, for instance, my, my kind of music is a savage music, I'll do well on Twitter space. Because every line of my lyrics would be a savage back to back. So I would do well on Twitter space. Everybody would be there. So if I am doing banter music, my music is just here and there. I don't think I want to be on Instagram that much. As much as you need an online presence everywhere, uh, it's important to know that you can only focus on one thing at a time. The, the more you grow, the more, is, the more you can actually spread your wings. But for now, I tell people, focus on one space. What that does for you is it makes you a king in that space. Um, when you're a king in one kingdom, it's quite impossible anybody ignores you. So you're not doing anything on Instagram without contacting Instablog if you want it to go viral in Nigeria. You'll probably be looking at Instablog. That means that person must make themselves king on Instagram. And it's just because they know the audience. It doesn't mean they're not on Telegram. It doesn't mean they're not on WhatsApp. But that is where we are. Now, it's the same thing with your type of audience. It helps you determine the type of space you choose. As number two. No, number three, rather. Now, your type of audience, you know your brand, you know your audience. Then you, need, you determine the type you choose. Uh, someone was around and asked if everybody was a Christian. I, I was listening and if everybody was a Christian and everybody agreed to be a Christian, everybody agreed to be saved. So I'll quickly use this Bible passage, Bible passage uh, to buttress my points. The parable of the sower. Now what happens in the parable of the sower is every seed is fertile. Everybody is actually a fertile seed. You have tendency to sprout to create increase, but the kind of ground you find yourself will determine if the increase will ever happen. The type of presence you determine, online presence you create, will determine if this would ever happen at all. If this would ever happen at all. So it's just of necessity that you understand the type of space you've created. So if you are a seed and you have probably fallen on the hard rock, find yourself on the hard rock because you do not understand your brand. The career is dead before you even started at all. So understand the brand, understand the audience, uh, understand the platform you are choosing. Now, once you have done that, the last thing, which is as important as every other part, is be active and consistent. At least I've known Minister Naomi now for over five years. She's been doing the same thing. Yes, there are lots of change, there's growth, but she has been consistent in this. So imagine a boot camp in five years' time. We certainly cannot use this auditorium, we cannot use this space, because it would be too small. If, you, if she probably considered a boot camp in 10 years ago, she probably would not find enough people to actually even register. But give it another five years' time. Activeness and uh, consistency has actually made way for her and recognition will come. So once you've done all this, once you've done all this over a period of time, uh, it's just normal. Our Instagram platform only have over 300,000 followers. That is consistency over a period of time. Earlier this year, Maverick City and Craig Franklin reached out to us for the tour that they were supposed to do. And I realized the place of consistency I got the mail and I was sharing with my team members saying, imagine this mail. The mail was everything. Recognition comes with activeness and consistency over a period of time. You can't drop the button as the singers put come. 
Consistency happens and you have to continue. That will be all from Israel. Thank you very much for coming to my pet. Hey, oh, you are my healer. You are my keeper. You are my constant friend. I don't need any other. I don't need any other 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 You are my healer You are my keeper you are my constant friend I don't need any other You are my healer You are my keeper You are my constant friend I don't need any other I don't need any other I don't need any other. I don't need any other. I don't need any other. You are my friend. Yes, you are. You are my constant friend. Yes, you are. Hey.
yesterday which is my style every time i define something i i look at what is most important in that definition what we need to pay attention to so if it's a collection of vocals so you say group it just basically means of course when you say group you're not talking about one right so i'm bringing antonia's voice i'm bringing oluchi's voice i'm bringing nancy's voice and i'm bringing ifine's voice and we bring them to sing together that's a group. It's a collection of vocals, right? Almost like what a choir is, right? Um, so what is most important when they come together? Now ceases to be the individual sound. And they now have to drop the unique individual uniqueness, in quotes, to embrace a new sound together, right? Are you with me? So if I have a now me and I have myself and I have Ifai and I have two other people come together, Naomi ceases to be Naomi Classic that minute, right? So whoever I am, whatever I've done in my life, however, however far I've gone, ceases to be important in that moment. Now, what we now need to achieve together is a unified sound. That's why my definition has something about sounding as one. So, if we come together as Naomi, as me, myself, and if I, but we don't sound as one, what would happen it would be that you'd have a disjointed sound and that would not be pleasing to the ear, right? And that's why a lot of times in choirs, people want to hear themselves. And I told you yesterday, once you start to hear yourself, there's no blend. Once you can hear yourself in the midst of a group, the blend is out of the way. Because blend basically is just the fineness of being together in such a way that there's, you can hardly separate, you can hardly single out a thing. It's like blending pepper and tomatoes. You cannot blend it and then pick out the tomatoes and the pepper. You know, it becomes one. It becomes the same. All right? You get what I mean? So that is blend. So when we blend, we come together in such a fine way that we cannot be separated. It's hard to single out a particular voice. All right? Do we understand that? Yeah. So um, while I'm speaking, if you have a question, please throw it at me. I'll answer you and move on. So if you understand that being a group is about blend, the next thing we want to ask ourselves is how do we blend? Because like I said, 
if you're in a choir, many times you're singing as a group, um, the next thing you would notice is that you can single out certain people's voices. Amen? Are you with me? Um, and the moment you can single out people's voices, personally, I tune off. At that point, it's harder for me to listen because it's no more pleasant to my ears. And I'll give you examples. We'll try a few things out to see how we blend. And yesterday was the easiest way I said we can blend. Nancy, don't look at your notes. Everybody's spying now. Don't look. Everybody, look at me. Eyes on me. And yesterday, you don't have to stand. You can sit down. When I was talking about blend, I mentioned a particular way or something that helps bring the voices together. Nancy? Okay, that is something. How come everybody's looking down? What are you looking for? After you spy, Abby, you're now, you're now raising your hand. Yeah? Who, who, who was raising? I saw a hand. What's your name? No, the person raising a hand. Kimberly. Uh-uh. Nice name. Okay. What does it mean? Ah, no for my hand. Okay. Noble child. You are looking at your notes. So how do you blend? Ah, I see where you're going, but you're not putting it well. So you don't go out and say, when you let out air together, <laughs> that's how you blend. Uh, but she's almost there, Abby. Some of you remember now. Kimberly, come, let me give you something. Come, hope Nigerian governments. The way, how are you looking at that? The way people come here very fast. Once I say come, how did you get here just now? <laughs> okay, so now air is a very important ingredient when it comes to bringing voices together, right? The breath. So you'd notice that when people sound airy, it's easier for them to sound as one, right? And we're going to try it out. But like Nancy said, even though I didn't say that particular point, but it's, it's one of the points. I didn't say it yesterday. So it's one of the points. But I'll, I'll see if the Lord is saying something. But well, it's one of the points. So you have to listen to each other. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. You are not looking at me like you're with me. Yes. Are you here? So it's important that you listen to each other. So if you're singing with me, you have to hear me. And every time I say that, you know, you have to die in the music in the sense that once you can hear yourself, then there's no blend. So you have to kill yourself. It doesn't mean that you're not literally heard because it's the collection of voices that we need to hear. So that means everybody needs to be singing, right? So at the end of the day, everybody's going to be heard. But the intention with blend is that we sound as close as possible so that our listener is hearing something as close to one sound as possible. So to do that, you have to deny yourself of being the upper person, of, of being the higher person, right? And how do you deny yourself of that? By listening to each other. So that's where volume control comes in. Because many times what kills blend is just volume control. The fact that you're not controlling your volume enough. So this person is singing right, you are singing right. But the fact that your volume is higher than this other person, there's no blend. So volume control is my next point for those who like to write. And I like the people who don't really write because they just go and play the um, voice note later. But I just hope your phone doesn't crash um, for whatever reason, um, in Jesus' name. So volume control is very, very important. Again, as someone who has been with singers over the years, um, one of the things that doesn't make us blend sometimes is not the fact that we don't even, um, it's not the fact that we don't know what it is or what helps us blend in terms of air usage, proper air usage, and all of that. It's just, again, the fact that 
with choirs, groups, singers. So our talent comes with a kind of ego. Talented people generally are proud. Generally are considered proud people. And sometimes they don't do it intentionally. But, you know, there is... There is a kind of um, pride and you know self awareness and ego that comes with applause. You know, you know when you if you walk into a room and you sing and everybody stands up to clap, there's a way it makes you feel, right? So imagine singing week in week out and you are very aware of how talented you are. And every time you show people, oh my God, you sound so good. Oh my God, oh my God, you guys sound, you guys killed it. You know, over time, something starts to build inside you. It's like people who used to handle 5K, 5K, 2K, 2.5, you know, and all of a sudden you hit the person with one million naira. You know, the person they used to greet good morning, sir, before, you know, it starts to look at the person like, you know, there's, the, there's this pride that comes with a a level of self-awareness in terms of what you've been able to acquire and what you can do. Are you guys with me? Yes. So, sometimes when we come together, again, I'm saying this as someone who has handled groups upon groups upon, upon groups in my life, you know, very popular people, not so popular people, not popular people, very to hear our voice. They've told you that you're the best singer in your choir. You lead the solo most times. So when, even when you're not leading the solo, you still want to be seen. And then the people who don't solo most times see themselves as uh, less talented people. Of course, that's, that's something that the church system has made us believe over time. And that's why many singers in choir strive, struggle to lead solo. They tell you, I've been in this church for five years. They've not even given me one solo. You know, because there's something in your head that tells you that the people who solo are better people. Are, if it's a performance that requires a group, background vocals or a choir, no matter how talented. So I, I, think I'm, I think when it comes to music directing, I can kill it. I think I'm really, really amazing. And, and this is me saying it in the most humble way. But I think I can kill. But guess what? No matter how great I am, if I don't have people like you, I can't. Die. It's like a coach. Without a team, you cannot be, you cannot be a pilot without a plane, without passengers. Do you understand? You, cannot, you can't stand alone. Even as a singer, you can't keep singing to your mirror every day. You need an audience. You need people to feed off them. You need people to accept what you're doing. You need people to feed off it. Do you understand what I'm saying? So nobody really stands alone. A drummer cannot just start playing the drums from January to December. You need a singer to sing so that you can play along, even though they're drum pieces, but you can't do that all year. You would have to play in the band. You would have to play with other musicians, right? So while you're playing the drums, you still need the bass player to play the right thing to feed you with the right energy. So we need to understand that every part is very important. Matter of fact, I even respect background vocalists more than lead singers. No disrespect. Because it takes a higher level of discipline to be a background vocalist than it takes to be a lead singer. And I can prove this anywhere in the world. As a lead singer, you can miss a line during a song and you'll be expecting your backup to carry you. If the backup doesn't carry, so who carries who? Do you understand what I'm saying? You can miss a line and say, come on everybody and turn it to hype. But you as an auto singer, you can't miss your part. You always have to be on point. You have to come in when you have to come in. You have to sing it the right way. But the lead singer has you know, a bit more leverage. You can play around and get away with a lot of things. That's not to say that there's no responsibility on the lead singer. That's not what I'm saying. Because it takes a lot to be in the spotlight. That's why even in, the, in today's music, the people who flourish the most are the people with more charisma and presence not the people who can actually sing, sing. So, because being in the spotlight requires a certain level of boldness. And if you have it, you can find a way around things. See, there are boys that 
will just come into the studio and do hype. I mean, today there's Ama Piano, there's Afrobeat is global. So if I play a beat, all you need to do is just vibe. You can even do Chukuli, Chukuli. That song, yeah, Babuluku, what's inside it? Chukuli, Chukuli, Chukuli. Because he's so confident, he's doing it with all his mind. You can feed off his energy. You can be like, oh my God, this guy is Sabi. But what does he really Sabi? What does he really know? Meanwhile, the people who can really sing are still there struggling for solo in church. Trying to be seen. In, you know, I'm not saying go out of church. I'm saying you're still struggling with the crumbs. You know, so that tells you that. And then bring some of these people who are really talented. And like I said, this is what I've seen over time. If you bring the people who are really talented into the spotlight, you find out that what they lack is confidence, not talent. You know, so the fact that they don't have the confidence, it will drown them to the point where you don't even have an opportunity to see their talent. That's why, again, when you watch reality shows, you see that the people who win are usually not the good singers. They're usually not the good singers. The good singers will come for audition, and because of tension and anxiety, they will just make the wrong decisions. And, of course, during an audition, you don't have the time to say, Sing another song. Let me hear it. No time. So they will judge you based on that. Meanwhile, people who are not really as good would come with so much confidence. In fact, sometimes people who are singing, you watch them a lot of times and we laugh. You know, they have so much confidence with the nonsense they are singing. And you still find someone among the judges saying, I like your confidence. I like your confidence. Just work on this and this and this. You'll be amazing. Because that in itself is something. And that's a quality that a lead singer must possess. So this is not to talk down or make you think the lead singer doesn't have any work to do. No, there's so much to do in that regard. But as it, comes, as it relates with background vocals, we have to be very intentional. So once you come together as a group, you have to take yourself away. You cease to be important. What is now important? is how we sound together. And I tell my guys every time, as popular as they are individually, once we come together, I would say, you know what? I don't care if you won an award last week. Put it in your pocket. Right now, I need a unified sound. And if we don't have that, we have failed. And then when you get back into your zone as a star, sing anything you want to sing, that's your business. Do you understand? So we've identified that the air helps us to blend, and we're going to practicalize that now. We've identified that um, we need to listen to each other. What's the next one? OK. So now, the next one is dynamics, um, which is also like an extension of volume control. You know. Um, so dynamics, of course, the different dynamics, um, fluctuations that are used in music, uh, like some of the ones we talked about yesterday, like crescendo, like the vibrato. So these are just, it's just color, you know. It's color that you, you just put, you know, music is art. It's like a painting, you know. You're just, you're looking at something and somewhere you splash the color red, somewhere else you splash another color, just to make it beautiful at the end of the day. So, you know, things like crescendo, vibrato, give me more. Give me more. Ah, okay, oh, sorry, bro. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> give me more. Ah, memoendo. <laughs> Who said memoendo there? <laughs> Eh? Jiminuendo. Diminuendo. Legato. Licato. Zuzu legato. <laughs> Zuzu zwalakate is, is a dynamic. Oh, my people. So, these are colors. So, when it comes to group singing, and I, I'm going to take some time to practicalize these things and make you see how important it is. So, now, you know what vibrato is. Angel knows what it is. Nancy knows what it is. But when they come together as a group, if they don't apply it at the same time, the same way, it makes no sense. Now, as I always say, when it comes to group singing, if, you, if Oluchi gets it, and Chelsea, Momiju, Dadiju, Nancy, everybody else 
doesn't get it. We all did not get it. If everybody gets it, but Oluchi doesn't get it, we all did not get it. So when we do rehearsals and, and you're trying to correct and someone says, me, I got it too, me, I got it too, you're wasting your time. Because if we all don't get it, we all did not get it. Right? You can't single anybody out. So we all failed, as far as I'm concerned. As far as it is. Anyway. So if you understand what vibrato is, it's basically just placing vib vibrations over a note. Right? And there's vibrato, there's wobble, which is not vibrato, and a lot of people think it is. You know what wobble is, right? Okay. So let's say vibrato is like this. You know, it's, it doesn't have a clear balance or direction. It's, it's scattered. <clears throat> so a lot of people just misuse vibrato. But my point now is, if Oluchi is vibrating, Nancy has to vibrate the same way at the same time. And yesterday when we were talking about crescendo, you know, I told you that it's a gradual increase in volume. So if someone increases volume, and then another person increases gradually, there's no blend. We all must increase together. And, and this is where... You know, that's why every group needs to have a director. There has to be someone, you know, leading to say what should be, when, and why, you know, when you're trying to paint the color, different colors, right? So dynamics plays a very important role, right?